any second now. All right, I'm gonna start the introduction. Ah, oh, there we go. I was gonna say she's probably gonna interrupt it. Mm-hmm. She, she gets a little bit freaked out when she hears me talking to the void. That's pretty much all recording a YouTube video is. So I'm gonna give up and move her to a new room. Hello everyone, thank you so much for being here. My name is Hannah. It's really great to see everyone here again. And if you're new, welcome. Um, you may have noticed since the last video, I got contact lenses. So that's what we're starting out today's video with. We are chatting about this collection of books, which are some of my absolute favorites of all time. And I decided to gift these to my family members for Christmas. There's a very wide range of subject matter and like authors and genres here so um, i'm hoping that this will serve as a general gift guide for the public audience if you are in need of a last minute christmas idea then stick around this video is for you one of these books might be your ticket out of the doghouse this also shouldn't have to be said but if you're related to me you're probably going to get one of these books for christmas so go away you'll get it in the mail in like a week and um, don't ruin the surprise for yourself because it would break my heart. Alrighty, so these are in no particular order. We're just gonna go with whatever book is on top first. And it looks like the first one that I have here is Beach Read by Emily Henry. The person in my life that this book is for, I think loves romance, loves a little bit of a whodunit mystery under plot. There's like a little bit an investigative journalism element in here. Everything is really lighthearted, easy to digest. I need to gift this person a page turner. It's really hard to keep this person's attention. I try watching movies with them sometimes and it just fast forward happens a lot. So I needed to get a book that is gripping, engaging, will catch you from the very first page and leave you asking, well, what's going to happen next? This is one of my favorite Emily Henry books. The book is broadly about the relationship between these two people who are both authors who end up in the same small town on the shores of Lake Michigan and um, decide to have a little competition where they swap genres in which they're writing in and both try to write a book by the end of the summer. So, um, and in one of those books, it's a very serious investigative journalism type thing where they're writing like a, a fiction book based off of a true story. But I think the investigative piece is about a cult. So uh, it's really interesting. Um, I know the person who I'm gifting this to likes true crime with a side of romance. I would say this book is the other way around. It's a romance book with a dash of true crime. So if there's somebody in your life who's used that description, maybe consider getting them Beach Read by Emily Henry. At some point, you'll probably hear my cat freaking out in the background. She's fine. She just wants attention. Anyways, this book is one of my favorites. It's called My Body by Emily Rotakowska. It's literally 10 out of 10. Aww. It is one of my, so my book buying philosophy is that collecting things stresses me out. I made sure to like organize this shelf so my most interesting books are on the side, but in a couple of weeks, maybe next week, I don't know, we're gonna be able to see the full nitty gritty of what's what's out of frame. Um, and I have, my, my bookshelf is pretty sparse and I don't like owning books that don't spark joy. So at one point I decided I would only buy books that I really love that are my like four and a half star plus ratings that I want to own and then be able to give to people. So a lot of this list I ended up shopping for in my own bookshelf. And this is, I think the first book that I bought like with that philosophy and that was like so meaningful to me that I was like, I need this in my house and I need every woman in my life to read this book. So if you need a book idea for somebody in your life who's really interested in like the female perspective, knowing what it feels like to be constantly interrogated by the male gaze being just like, I don't even know like what words I would put to this. So the author is professionally a model and kind of had her claim to fame as being as starring in the Robin Thicke uh, Blurred Lines music video. Back when music videos were a very big thing, a lot of people saw that music video and 
um, a lot of people know her because of it. And she's had a pretty successful, successful modeling career, but that hasn't been without like all of the kind of traditional downfalls that you think of when you think of modeling, like being constantly objectified, being constantly scrutinized, constantly having to like live under the male gaze and having people doubt your intellectual, like your intellectualism and your ability to like receive and synthesize information and advocate for yourself. Um, so I'm gifting this to a girly in my life who I think needs to hear how amazing she is. And like this book, if anything, I think this is a common theme with books that I have loved, just made me feel so seen and so heard. And maybe there's a girl in your life who's like a woman in STEM and is not in a like predominantly woman field, not that there are really many of those. And it's just like, just like misses being in groups of predominantly women um, or predominantly not men. This book is for that person. It's for somebody who just wants to feel felt, seen, heard, and like other people get it, you know? I, I really liked her writing. I thought this was a really easy read. The person who I'm gifting this to is also probably like the least reader of my family, meaning like she just reads a couple of books a year that are like super highly recommended to her sometimes if we get like everyone in my family to read a book she'll read the book but she's not a big reader so i really wanted to get her something that was like in the bite-sized number of pages i think this has less than 200 has right about 200 um so i'm hoping it'll be pretty manageable i'm hoping this is the kind of book that you can read a chapter a day of be like oh, wow other people have felt what i'm feeling too uh and that it'll be it'll be good for her all right this next book the anthropocene reviewed by john green is probably my current favorite book and it's had the like number one title as my favorite book for a really long time i would say i also love how much these two books match but i'm not giving them to people who are unwrapping them at the same time and i'm a little bit sad about it but anyways uh this book has been my number one favorite book for such a long time the, the kind of person who I would give this to is like, again, interested in memoir, interested in like hearing other people's perspective on the world. And like, this is another book that just made me feel so seen, heard, and felt. I, John Green writes about a, a really wide variety of things. Like, um, I'll read you some chapter titles. So this book is like, the Anthropocene is the current geologic era and it's like the title Anthropocene Reviewed is him taking different themes in his life and like things from this geologic era, really just like era in his life, and he's rating them out of five stars. So the like title of each chapter is the topic of the thing that he's rating. And I'm just table of contents going to read you a few of these. Um, Canada geese, teddy bears, Humanity's Temporal Range, Halley's Comet, Sunsets, and the list goes on. I will let you read the rest of the table of contents if you choose to buy this book, but um, this, like, as a person who struggled with mental illness and, like, mental health problems, I've never seen a book that made me feel, like, more, more human and more okay with, like, the darker parts of me than this book has. The way that he writes about his experiences with these things is just astounding and like the other 90% of this book that isn't about his like darkest moments in his mental health journey <laughs> are really extraordinarily well written. We know this about John Green. We've probably read one of his books at some point. His nonfiction is similarly stellar. Uh, I think all of the writing in this is just phenomenal and it's just such a like witty fun way of telling the story of one's life. So I love reading memoir and this is my favorite book. If you know somebody in your life who likes reading memoir, who just likes thinking about the human condition, who's struggling with mental health and is feeling really alone, this book is for them. The person I'm gifting this to actually doesn't know me at all and I don't know them at all. Um, so this book I'm gifting as like, a, this is my favorite book ever. If you want to get to know me, you should read this. So that's John Green, The Anthropocene Reviewed. 
All right, in the comments, you should let me know what book you're gifting for Christmas this year. If you're gifting books, what book you would love to receive for Christmas. If you're asking for books this year, I know asking for gift cards is like the way to go for people who love books. So if nothing on this list you think suits the palette of your friends who are readers, then gift cards are always the safe option. Just let them buy their own books. But you know, Goodreads lists are public and if any of these are on there, you know what to do. Anyways, Hail Mary by Andy Weir is an absolute whirlwind of a novel. The kind of person that I am gifting this to is relatively scientifically minded. I'm also gifting this to someone who's not really a reader, but who assured me that if I gave them a book, they would read it. So I wanted to get them something that was like really fast paced, really engaging, even though this is a little bit of a bigger book. It took me like no time at all to get through it. This is science fiction. It is a like a space mystery. Um, some some points it's thriller, but it's mostly sci-fi. It's really like you're going on an investigative journey with this character and like using physics to solve the problem. So if there's someone in your life who loves physics, who loves space, who needs a book that's a really fast, fun read. That is Hail Mary by Andy Weir. We're on to the last two books. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm only 100 pages into this one, but it was recommended so highly by this other YouTuber. Um, it was in one of their like top books of the year and I'll tag the video, but this is Legendborn by Tracy, Tracy Dion. I picked this up because the person who I'm buying this book for is going off to college next year and I'm so happy for her and I'm so proud of her um, but I wanted to she's like came into reading a little bit later into her teenage years and I don't think I ever really got that experience of getting like hooked on it like Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, Twilight, whatever your poison was, Hunger Games. I don't think she ever really experienced that like that like preteen, like, oh my god, this series is my life, which I feel like is a really formative, like, rite of passage as a reader. So I wanted to get her something that kind of replicated that feeling, but in a really mature YA book that dealt with the, the like, passage of high school to college and dealt with like these notions of growing up. So this is set maybe a little bit earlier than that. The main character is in an early college program where she's still like 16, 17 years old, but um, is doing the last two years of high school on a college campus. Yeah, I wanted something that was, that kind of took the world that we exist in and expanded it in a way that's like out of reach, but still imaginable and transported you into another world that you could like kind of believe because of that. Like, I don't know, like, are you picking up what I'm putting out right now? I, I don't know if I'm articulating myself very clearly. It's like a Venn diagram of things that exist and things that could never exist. And then in the middle, there's like this magical realism with a dash of fantasy where it's like they live in North Carolina, but they also hunt demons. I really hope that it gives her all of the like feel good YA feelings, but with that like dash of like, wow, I'm growing up and like it's changing that, that I'm hoping it will. Um, so I can't vouch for this one yet, but People whose reading opinions I really respect have vouched for it. And if you're seeking similar things, this might be the book for you. Um, we'll never know. All right, we're on to the last book. So I'm getting this for a person in my life who has a degree in history, who's really interested in US policy, who like for fun reads nonfiction books about the US and global history um, just in their free time. This book I read uh, as a part of a work book club. I am a hashtag woman in STEM uh, and I work in the semiconductor field. This book is about kind of the rise and fall of production of semiconductors in the United States. That's all I'll say about this. I know my audience probably does not care about nonfiction semiconductor literature, but if there's somebody in your life who's really curious about US policy around these things, has like a palette for this like historical study explorative nonfiction, 
Chip Horn was actually really good. The the author is Chris Miller. I think he did a really exceptional d job doing the like investigative piece of this. Told the story really well. I feel like he didn't really cut any corners and was this book was super well articulated. So for all of those reasons, I would recommend it. All right, this is the part of the video where I get to say like, comment, subscribe. I'm so excited to see you guys back next week. Hope you all have a really great holiday and I will see you on Christmas. I'll keep my 4.15 posting schedule, but yeah, that's all.